You know, I love Disney as much as the next girl does, but I feel like some of these people are really getting out of hand. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi, my name is Zaria Smith and I typically make commentary videos just like this one. So if you guys happen to like that or you just happen to like my gorgeous face, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell to get notified every single time I post, which happens to be on Mondays and on Fridays. My makeup is done today and that's mostly because I'm a thousand percent expecting for a bunch of Disney adults to click on this video, watch two minutes, and then leave hate comments. So I'm doing my makeup so that when it gets on the trending page, I'll at least look cute. Um, today's candle of the day is a lava candle. I love this candle like I told you guys. Um, and yeah, so let's get on to the video so I can get in my points before people start hating. So first, I'm going to start off with my connection to Disney. Now, I am a Floridian. I talk about it. It's honestly one of my greatest faults <laughs> is living in Florida. Um, and since I live in Florida, I think that because of the amount of theme parks we have, I, growing up, Theme parks were very important. You know, growing up, I would go on field trips to Busch Gardens, Universal, Wild Adventures, you know, but Disney was always something that I never really went to growing up. And it's not because my family, well, <laughs> it's not because I had some sort of hatred for Disney. You know, I love the capitalist mouse just as much as we all do. But for some reason, I just never really went to Disney growing up. And it wasn't until I was, well, I went to Disney before when I was like a baby, but like, I really don't count that. But I went to Disney when I was 17 years old for my 17th birthday. Um, and <laughs> It was kind of a train wreck, to say the least. Um, I actually did not really like my experience at Disney, though I did like that at the, um, it's like the, the, the Lady and the Tramp restaurant. They gave me a cute little ice cream thing for my birthday um, for free. That was really cute and nice. But other than that, Disney was very just much like a neutral experience for me. My family, whenever we went on vacations to amusement parks, we went to Busch Gardens or Universal, and that was pretty much it. So it was very strange to me growing up and seeing so many people going to Disney. And there are so many people that I knew that had like Disney seasonal past, people whose parents love Disney. There are people that I knew who went to Disney every single weekend with their families. And like I said, I like Disney as much as the next girl, but like I just can't imagine um, Disney being so amazing that you and your family will drive the two hours or two and a half hours rather, to go to Disney, to wait in lines all day, get there at 6 a.m. and not come back until midnight. Um, that just does not seem very pleasurable to me. It doesn't seem like something that I would particularly like. Um, I do happen to like Disney movies to some extent. Um, I did recently rewatch um, Song of the South. So I'm a little bit, I'm not really this tight with Mickey at the moment, but other than that, I generally like Disney. I love Marvel. I'm kind of getting into Star Wars. Eh. And every and Disney literally owns everything. From what I learned in my media and society class, Disney owns so much more than what I thought that they did. And it's kind of scary how big Disney is in like owning stuff. I feel like it has to be illegal. But all of those aside, Disney is something that I particularly don't have much attachment to, but I do definitely understand people who love Disney, who like going. It's a ma magical place on earth. Now I happen to have had a panic attack <laughs> while in Frontierland, I think it was, because they were having like a flash mob with all the mascots. And fun fact, I have a fear of mascots. Please do not use that against me. If you try to DM me a picture of like any mascot, I will immediately block you um, out of fear and out of protection for myself. <laughs> Um, but that's my attachment at Disney. I don't really have much, but I do live in Florida and I have been there before. So I feel like I wanted to clarify. I do know Disney. Well, I, I mean, I've been to Disney. I've been to Disney. I've been to Animal Kingdom. I went to the Walt Disney World, like, um, Magic Kingdom. I went to Hollywood Studios and I also went to Epcot. And I think that those are all the parks that are in Florida, right? Yeah, I think those are all the parks. Oh, I also went to Disney Springs really quickly, but I don't really think that counts as a theme park. That was just like whatever. So I've been to Disney. I used to live in Orlando, if you don't know from that part of my YouTube channel. It's really cringy for me to look back at, but I used to live in Orlando too for uh, like a couple months and then COVID happened or the panoramic happened. So I had to move back home 
more up north. I hate it here. <laughs> but that all aside, that is my attachment to Disney and I talked way too long. But either way, in today's video, we're going to be talking about Disney adults and I think they're just weird. <laughs> That's it. Like, I literally just think that Disney adults are just very strange to me and I... I want to wrap my mind around it. It's not even that I'm like, oh, I'm hating on Disney adults because Disney adults suck. I genuinely want to know what is so great about a cartoon mouse. It's not just a mouse, but I always want to know what's so great about Disney that you go there that much and you love Disney that much despite, you know, not having kids, which I mean, you don't got to have kids. I don't even want kids. So who am I to say? You're allowed to have fun. But it's just very strange to me. This like, it almost feels like a phenomenon. And this has been going on for years. I did research. It's crazy the, the, the like how long Disney adults have been a thing. But if you do not know what Disney adults are, and you'll be like, what are you talking about, Zarya? Basically, Urban Dictionary describes this as, <laughs> this is kind of mean. This is really funny to me, but it's very mean. A millennial adult with or without kids they can't stop talking about Disney, including the movies and the parks. Even if they do have kids, they're still way more obsessed with it than their kids would ever be. They probably engaged in casual Disney bounding and visit the theme parks at least once a year. They're obsessed with everything Disney and probably have Mickey Mouse, have the Mickey Mouse bumper sticker and or tattoo. One of the most terrifyingly intense people you'll ever encounter. Now, like I said, I live in Florida. Everybody and their mama was obsessed with Disney and I never understood why <laughs> um but basically in this article on Medium it, it's funny that they're they, I feel like the discourse between Disney adults are either like they love them or they hate them and I happen to just come across all the people that hated them so in this Medium article a person said and I quote no matter how hard we try there will always be people who associate adult Disney associate adult Disney fandom with furries or bronies no offense to furries or bronies. Was the fact that furries or bronies would be offended by being compared to Disney adults says a lot. Because if you don't know what a furry is, honestly, don't even look it up. It's, you should stay in the dark. And bronies are, what was it, like the 30, like middle-aged man men who like love My Little Pony, which I love My Little Pony, let me tell you. Um, so that was one article that I saw on Medium. And then another person wanted to, you know, say that Disney adults are not just people that are obsessed with Disney. You know, some of them are entrepreneurs, artists, inventors, and teachers. They run marathons and plan girls' nights with friends. They're definitely more than, as one woman yelled on the internet, childless millennials who throw away their money on Mickey pretzels. They're proof that loving Disney as an adult isn't weird. As a New York Post contended, it can be deeply meaningful. And the New York Post, oh my gosh, I have to find it. It was so funny. Just, just to know. The headline for this article was, sorry, childless millennials, going to Disney World is weird. <laughs> and that's just the headline. So you already know that it was a lot of rudeness going on with Disney adults. And that is essentially what Disney adults are. Now, I want to clarify, I think this is a disclaimer, probably the people that are going to be harassing me on this video probably aren't going to watch this part. But if you made it this far, I just want to say there is nothing wrong with liking something. If something makes you happy and it's not causing harm to others, you know, be happy, you know. But I mean, look at me. This book I recently got, I'm reading it right now. It's called No Longer Human from, um, if you guys don't know, I love anime. I have a video on it. And Daza is actually a character in the show. And this is a book that's kind of written from like his perspective, which I think is kind of cool. And I love it. I love anime. I have a Hawks light that I've shown before. Anime is encompassing my entire life. So I am not one to talk and say, you're weird for liking Disney. Because Disney, you know, like whatever. I mean, it is kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, it's not weird, but it is kind of weird. But like, enjoy things that you want. Cartoons were originally meant for adults, not for kids. So, you know. You're honestly probably more in the right than I am. <laughs> but I do think it's kind of interesting to see that people are so obsessed with Disney, specifically since Disney, like Walt Disney, probably half of the Disney adults in the world would hate simply for being either Jewish or black or disabled <laughs> or literally anything. So it's very interesting to me that Disney has such a huge cult fan base when the actual man, Walt Disney, probably would have hated you. 
honestly. Um, it's just very like, like I said, strange to me. I mean, I love anime. I don't really cosplay though, which I'm gonna get into Disney bounding next, but like I don't cosplay. I might one day, but I also don't have like the money to cosplay. So if you want to give me money, <laughs> no, I need to stop. Um, but yeah, so I feel like there's nothing wrong with doing something that you like. If it's not causing harm to others and you can feel free to do whatever you want, but also don't be weird about it. Um, and don't harass people for having differing opinions. I see a lot of Disney adults, at least from my research on Reddit and such, that a lot of Disney adults are very just like angry at like someone saying like, oh, it's kind of weird that you revolve your entire life around going to Disney and you spend all of your money, life savings on going to Disney every single weekend. That's just kind of like interesting. There was one girl that I saw on this refinery, like little video where she had over 500 pairs of like ears and people like know the entire map layout of every single Disney park, including in Anaheim and Tokyo and Shanghai and Paris. That is scary. That's quite scary. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree if you were like imagine if you were this was actually a college humor like skit um remember college humor back in the day but they made a skit about disney adults like about five years ago talking about just how weird disney adults are so it is the mark of my people the mark of house mouse ever since i was a boy my brethren and i would make an annual pilgrimage to the mouse now even though I am grown, my heart still yearns for the red rocks of Frontierland and the enchanted falls of Splash Mountain. So you're from one of those Disney families that goes there every vacation instead of venturing outside their comfort zones? Be an accurate assessment? Yeah. Cool. Well, I don't want to waste my vacation time going to Disney World. I feel like I'm not in the minority with my opinion, but I also feel like a lot of Disney, Disney adults are going to see this and like attack me. But honestly, do y'all sing? I just think it's interesting and I like to do, do deep dives on stuff. So this was just one of those things. But next we're going to talk about Disney bounding. Now, one person described Disney bounding as a way to express your love for Disney through fashion. It uses clothes to recreate outfits of your favorite Disney characters without being costumey. You could go to school or the mall in a Disney bound and not get pegged for being in costume. For me, Disney bounding is like subtle cosplay. Now, I would like to say that Disney bounding became really a really popular thing because adults were dressing up as Disney characters at the Disney parks. And it had gotten to be such a problem that adults were banned, well, adults and teenagers were banned from dressing up as Disney characters at the parks. So then Disney bounding became like more of a popular thing where people were dressing up subtly as Disney characters because they just want to be Disney characters, I guess, like so bad. And uh, Sophia Nygaard actually made a video of her dressing up as a Disney character while she goes to Disney. And Disney, and I think that Sophia is generally considered a Disney adult because um, she said that they go to Disney all the time. So Disney bounding is very popular and I don't really disagree with it. I think you dress however you want to dress. I mean, I... If you guys saw me on the street, like I'm like, when I, when I become famous, like my paparazzi pictures are gonna be so embarrassing because like I literally only dress up in a hoodie and leggings and then my Nike slides. That's it. Um, wig is not laid down, makeup is not on. I just look like a train wreck and I'm waiting for the day that either I meet one of my subscribers or like I get hounded by paparazzi and they see how I look on a day-to-day -day basis and they're gonna be like, wow, she's like a bum. That's literally how I dress. So I really can't say anything about having a fashion sense, but it's just very interesting to me. Um, and next I'm gonna talk about Disney influencers. Now the most popular one that I saw was a person called Styled by Magic. And this is the thing that I wanna get into. I have no issues with her. She's great, do your thing. She's gorgeous. I think she's married or engaged, something like that. But she moved to Celebration Florida because of the like m amount of her Disney content. And I don't wanna say anything like rude about Celebration. No, I will say something rude about Celebration. So I went to Celebration Florida, you know, briefly for a um, audition for something. As you know, I like to act um, on the occasion. Well, I like to act a lot. And I went to an audition um, in Celebration Florida. And I will tell you that me and my mother were in Celebration Florida for like a couple hours. Well, maybe like an hour and some change. And my mother can attest to this, though she's probably not watching. <laughs> but like we were there and we saw maybe one person of color that was Hispanic and they were a janitor. Other than that, 
every single person there was white. And like not even like, oh, they're like part white. Like, no, like white. <laughs> very scary, very get outy type of neighborhood. Though no hating on Celebration. It's very pretty, very clean, like very much looks like if Disney were to own a neighborhood, which Disney literally owns Celebration Florida. But I feel like with Disney influencers, my issue isn't the fact that they love Disney. You know what? Capitalize on your niche. Do whatever you do. But it is very strange to me with thinking about with people like I've seen on TikTok, people like being like, oh, going to Six Flags is ghetto. Going to Universal is ghetto. Going to Busch Gardens is ghetto. Disney. Disney is the best theme park ever. And Disney is for like all the cool people. And it's like people can't afford to go to Disney sometimes. A person can afford a $45 ticket to SeaWorld. Can they afford, you know, $200, $300 to go to Disney? And you know, some people that go to Disney, they have to go through the Fast Pass. They have to have, they have to go through the Disney Resort. They have to get the three-day pass. They have to get every single park included on that pass. That racks up, that racks up a lot of coin, you know? So I feel like people shaming other people for, you know, going to Universal instead of Disney and saying, like, oh, Universal is ghetto. Some people's Disney is Universal. Universal is so fun. I literally love going to Universal. So I think that promoting the privilege of being able to go to Disney in general is very much just privilegy, <laughs> to say the least. And I think that, you know, Disney influencers are also nice in that sense that if I, if I don't know what I'm going to do at Disney, I can definitely go to one of their YouTube channels or one of their TikToks and I can see exactly what I'm going to be doing at Disney because they know the layout and they know everything, which is very good. But it's just interesting to me to think about Disney influencers whose lives revolve around Disney and obviously they're getting paid, but it's just very not right to me. And either way, this is going to be my final thoughts because I've been talking about this for like three minutes already. But I think Disney is great. Like I said, I have no issues with Disney. I do have issues with Disney actually. Um, but <laughs> um, I think that Disney parks, they don't really care about you as a person. Um, they don't really care about the typical Disney adult. They just get their coin and they leave. Um, but if you like something, who am I to say that you're not allowed to enjoy something that makes you happy? If you have the funds to afford Disney and you wanna go with you and your buddies, go. I personally am not a Disney adult, but I said that I want to go to every single Disney um, for each, each birthday. So like I want to go to Disney in Anaheim and I want to go to Disney in Japan and Disney in Paris and like all that stuff. Like that's what I want to do, but that's just because I want to know what they're like. Not necessarily because I love Disney. I don't even have a pair of, like I don't even have a pair of like Mickey ears. So not very Disney focused, but I am a Floridian, like I said. If you don't believe me, I do listen to Kodak Black um, and I just went to Publix to get a sub. So <laughs> I would say I'm pretty floridian E, um, But all that aside, literally do what you want. Do not take this video as me harassing you. Um, I see a lot of people um, whenever I make videos about certain subgroups. I'm not by no means saying that like what you're doing is wrong. If you have the money and you can do it, literally go and do it. You're not causing harm to me. It's just interesting to look at, like personally, to say the least. Um, please don't hate on me. Well, or do because whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that is my opinions on Disney adults. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps small channels like mine. Make sure to also subscribe down below because um, I want to grow my channel. You know because I want to, you know, and I should be able to grow my channel. So if you like commentary videos like this one, I post a lot. <laughs> um, subscribe, literally. Follow me on my social media, I guess. I never promote that because I don't really post a lot on Instagram, but I am active on Twitter. So, you know, you'll see a lot of me on Twitter. Um, but yeah, so make sure to stay happy and stay healthy. I want to catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.